Okay, this is a fix for the last video. Apparently the code was okay. It was just uh, me, user error, forgetting to set the permissions correctly. So there's actually two types of permissions you have to set. The emulator that I gave you, if you're running on the VirtualBox emulator, is already opened up. The emulators uh, on the Android may actually need to be opened up. You have to go into the settings and allow the <coughs> phone to have apps access the contacts, contacts and the providers that are on the phone. You also have to set a permission inside of your Android manifest, which I failed to remember to do, which is why our app's not working correctly. If you s go back down here, which tells you that uh, there's so many different parts of this, one little piece of the puzzle will actually cause your app not to work correctly until you'll figure out what in the world was that. So the problem was actually not with the case switch or with the final value because we're just setting, in fact, we weren't really even using that value. We're just setting it and then returning it. So it doesn't really matter what it was. We're just looking for the value to come back, actually. So if the value came back, then we were setting the email address from the content contact that was selected from the content providing and we're populating that email address into the edit text field. So just to reiterate the point back up here, so your code works successfully. You can leave the final static integer. It doesn't really matter what you set it to. It's just a placeholder. It's not actually indicating the ID of the contact that's coming back. Out here, we're just setting it. And if it comes back, we only have one case statement. <laughs> we're setting it so it comes back. If it comes back with whatever it was, then we're going to go through and we're going to change the edit text. To the, to the value that we're looking at. So here's the piece that we're missing. Um, in the contact manifest, there's a couple of different ways of adding permissions. You can use the GUI, and I've tried to use the GUI before, and I can see this one was added in. I added it in manually a few minutes ago. Sometimes it's easier to type it in yourself. You have to, add, 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 excuse me, you have to edit the Android manifest file to add this permission so that the app can access the content provider. Otherwise, the app's not going to access it. Even though it looks like it's doing it, it won't have the permission to open it. Also remember, just in case I forget later on, we need to do this for the web view as well. <laughs> so someone remind me later on, because I always forget to set the I always forget to set the permissions. So you have to set it for reading and writing to files, using the database, using the internet using certain content on the phone, everything has a separate permission to it. Um, so what we're doing here is you can add it manually, or in some cases, I couldn't remember the name of it, but if you add it, excuse me, add it through the GUI or add it by appending, you're putting it outside of the application tag. I usually put this at the bottom. You can put it at the top. It doesn't matter where you put it in the file. What you're putting in, and see, let's see if I can make this a bit bigger. You're saying that your user's permission, and let's see what this message here is saying. Tag appears after application. It doesn't really matter, actually. You can put it inside of application. Let me, just, let me just do that. It actually, it used to matter. I don't believe it matters anymore where you're putting it. So I'm still getting the same message. Let me, let me save it so the message goes away. No, it can't go after application. Let me put it back where it was working before. The message makes no sense to me. <laughs> I have a message. I have a warning. This is a warning, by the way, not an error message. I have a warning telling me it needs to go in application. I put it in application, and I have a warning. It says, it's in application. Take it out of application. So let's not... Let's not worry about that warning right now. Um, in the old days, we never put it inside an application. So I don't know what the logic is here. Uh, but long story short, I just put it at the bottom before the closing tag of the manifest. So it's not embedded inside of one of the other tags where it's going to cause a problem. And I'm typing this in here, so I'll leave this on the board so you can kind of type it in yourself. It is not in the tutorial. I need to add that part. I totally left it out, actually. <laughs> Well, that's the problem. They have changed the interface, and uh, to tell you the truth, I think this is convoluted, and I haven't spent enough time to invest in using this interface. But you would click on it, you would go permission, 
and then you'd get a new permission over here, and then you'd have to give it a name, like test. Let's see. And then you show up here, and it says, well, create an element at the top level, create one at the bottom level, and then it's just very convoluted to the point where I haven't invested enough time in looking at it. So instead, I'll use it down here. If you go online to the android.developer.com, it'll show you the steps for each one of the adding of it through the GUI. I don't like to use the GUI for strings, for menus, or for the manifest. I just like to go in and type the stuff into the manifest because it makes more sense to me. The GUIs are supposed to automate things, but the language being used in the GUIs and the prompts, I'm, I'm not following the language. <laughs> so, uh, but what? Yeah, it's in another list. So. It's in user's permissions. Uses per Oops, hold on a second. Let me make this a little bit smaller here. Uh, permissions. Uses permissions is what we're adding. I'm sorry, I was clicking on permissions, so uses permission. And there should be a drop down list. There is a drop down list. Actually, that's not a bad thing to look at, actually, right now. The more you add in here, the more the user is going to be prompt when you install this application. So if you put in a lot of stuff, you can add one for each one. Um, so we can put in, uh, way down at the bottom, you can put in one for reading contacts somewhere in here. Reading contacts, this is the one here. And you just select add, then I have it in twice. If I do it this way, I wonder where I was going to put it in. That's going to be an interesting one. But uh, So you can do it this way if you want to. I always, I, I'm just, have a habit of, of editing the manifest manually. So, um, but, so I'm not familiar with the GUI tools for it, uh, but I'm sure you can plug and play around and figure it out. But long story short, these are the different options that you can add in. And when you add these in, and when the user installs the app, it's going to get prompted. The app is trying to use the context. Would you like to allow this? And the user has to go, okay, yes. And the app's going to use this, or there's going to be one. Here's all the permissions that this app is requesting. Would you like to allow it? And then the user has to respond to that. And sometimes those things are kind of scary. Uses the internet, uses contacts, uses this, uses that. I'm kind of wary when I install an app that has a bunch of these permissions that it's opening up on my phone. And it's to allow the app to use the phone. You can also set it on the phone, but you still have to set it in the app. Long story short. So if we set the permission like we were supposed to have done, and uh, let's see if I can just remove this sucker here. I don't like I don't like that tool. I'll put it back on here so you can copy this in there if you haven't done it already. The permission we're setting is Android permission read contacts. And it's an opening tag with a closing tag, and the closing tag is uses permissions. Permission, excuse me. Anyone still copying that down? Okay, so I'll hold off for a few minutes here. Now when you run the project, it doesn't matter which one you click on, just click on one, you'll get the email address that shows up in the edit text. So let's let me know when I can when I can move forward. <laughs> Are we still copying? We're done. Good. Everybody else done? So now the expected functionality is not gonna do anything. This is actually part one of a two part tutorial. And I'm gonna not do part two because I want to make sure that that one is working uh, properly and I've included all the steps. So now if I run my application here, after I've set the permissions, this is the expected behavior that you should receive. Pick email. I'm going to pick an email. And I'm going to get the email address that shows up in the email field. I don't believe the search is working at this point. There's a piece, there's other parts of this. This could have been a label. It didn't necessarily need to be one there. You're going to type one in. Because uh, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to be replaced with whatever email address it comes back with. So we don't have anything really tied to that yet. The part two of this tutorial, which I believe I'm going to save after I rewrite it to make it to make sure. I have to I have to check it. It's about a year or so old. I haven't, haven't looked at it in a while, so I'm going to check it out, make sure, and uh, run it through it and actually make sure it still works and stuff like that. I haven't left out any steps like setting permissions. And then uh, we'll finish that during the next weekend. So 
so we can push ahead with other topics, essentially. So we'll, we'll revisit this one, so save it. If you're coming back at the end of the month, save it, and we will get, get it working. Save it, and then we'll modify it and add more stuff to it the next week in session. But you should definitely be able to uh, have different email addresses show up depending upon which one you click. If you've made it this far, you've accomplished the goal of this tutorial. And so there's no modifications at all to the code. You can leave the code as is. It works. Um, it works as is. As is. So I'm going to stop this video so I can post this one as a separate addendum to the previous one. So we can, uh, for those people who saw the previous one and figured out, oh, there's a problem. So.